Good morning to this uh, brave new world of church online. Um, you're going to have to bear with us over the next little while because we, um, this is not something we've done before and we're learning as we go along. Um, none of us are professional um, broadcast engineers. We don't have makeup and support and all that sort of stuff. So we're just going to do the best we can and uh, and we're going to go along and do what we can while we can. This morning, Louise and I are just going to have a conversation about what our, our heart is for what's going to be happening over the next little while and how we intend the church to go forward during this, um, this interregnum where, we, where everything is shut down and closed. So sit back and enjoy while we just have a conversation. Yeah, here we are. We are our... Properly social distanced two meters or so apart, and uh, just kind of thinking about things that um, we've talked about in the past, or people have talked about, and um, and I think one of the things that everybody is really noticing is this tendency to listen to a lot of news and a lot of things changing so fast, and people feel really scared. Like there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, which, which is, I think, you know, why we've seen some of this panic behavior, right? The, this fear, and um, we were talking the other day about how we. One of the things we have to really make a conscious effort about during times like this is is dealing with the dealing with fear. You know, like fear changes people, doesn't it? Like, yes, it does. <laughs> haven't we noticed that, like the 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 on the news back. Wow, that's probably more like a week ago, but nice, your nice neighborhood friendly people who show up in a store and they push and they shove and they grab stuff out of their, you know, someone who might be their neighbor's hands, you know, it's, it's, it, fear makes people combative and it's like it brings out the worst in them, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and as believers, we have to move beyond that. Um, we have to move beyond fear and into faith. Um, I said earlier this week on Facebook that Paul tells us in, in 2 Timothy that we haven't been given a spirit of fear. And when we have this wonderful opportunity right now that uh, we can live out our faith and our hope in front of our friends and our neighbors, um, that we actually can live what we say we believe, that God is in control, that He is the one who is sovereign and that he is looking after us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to operate in a spirit of fear. We can operate in a spirit of power and love and self-discipline as we're told in 2 Timothy. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, um, we had a piece that was given to us by our district superintendent Andrew Porterfield and he quoted the uh, dean of our Bible college in Saskatoon and he He's famous for saying to his students, don't waste a good crisis. And we're in a crisis. Um, things are shut down. We, we, you, if you're going to drive anywhere, there's nowhere. You, the, Tim Hortons is closed. You have to go through the drive through You can't go into a restaurant. Your, your bank's not going to be open the way. Things are not the way they were. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about fear is it is very... It's a horrible feeling, and I was. It made me think of this verse in First uh, John, chapter four, verse eighteen. It says, um, "There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has torment. Mm -hmm. And if we act, it says, the one who acts lives in fear is not made perfect in love. And fear is horrible. Fear makes you just feel scared and and." It makes you feel like you're all alone out there in the world, you know, fighting against everybody else. It's sort of like it makes you pull all in, and me and mine and my family, and we're just going to fight the world so we can survive. And and um, and that's just the very opposite of what faith and God says, because faith, fear makes us like enemies of one another, and faith, trusting in God and knowing that He is ultimately in control in our lives and then what's going on it changes us so that we start thinking 
about what is best for the, those around us. It, it turns it into what is what can I do that's wisest and most careful and what's right because I want to do what's best for my family and me, but I care about you. Like, I don't want something bad to happen to you instead of you being my enemy now. We're in it together, right? That's right. And, and this gives us a wonderful opportunity to um, connect by phone mm -hmm. with the people around us. Um, how are you doing? Are, are you okay? To, to be that voice of encouragement. That there is an end to this. There is, there is a hope in this. We can, we can trust that things will get better. As believers, we know that all things work together for good, for those that love the Lord. That doesn't mean that all things are good all the time, but it means that God ultimately can take even the bad things that happen and uh, restore them and rejuvenate them and bring redemption to them. And we need to live that out in the people around us. Well, and think about it. Like, down through history, the church, and I don't mean like a certain denomination, I mean everybody who's following Jesus, right? The church has always been, in you know, in times of disaster or war or crisis of all kinds, it's always been the church that has risen up and said, well, I'll go, well, I'll help, well, let me care, let me bring aid, let me heal, you know, and even in the face of danger and even when there's risk involved, it's, it's always been the church, you know, that has been the first to, you know just to rise up and say okay what can we do you know because that's Jesus Jesus very the essence of who he is is love and giving and yeah. so it's like it's like this great opportunity for the church to make a difference you know we've been praying for our worlds and, and for them to see Jesus well let's see if we can be the ones who help them see him through us absolutely that's what we can do as individuals and we as a church we want to, Pastor Louise and I want to lead well. We want to lead well through this time. Mm -hmm. um, we, again, this is brand new territory. They didn't teach us how to do this in Bible college. Nobody anticipated there would be a time when churches would be closed and we would have to be doing this on digital. And um, But we are going to be in contact with people. We are going to be calling people in our congregation. We are going to be available. Feel free to call us here at the church. Uh, we're going to be doing this um, on a regular basis. We're releasing things on digitally and we are going to we're going to survive. Mm -hmm. We're going to trust God that we're going to grow and bloom in this. Yeah. That, yeah. that we're going to learn, we're being forced how to learn to learn how to do things that we need to be doing anyway in this day and age. This is how people connect. So we need to be, we're being forced how to learn how to do it. And quite frankly, uh, it's scary. Um, this is not my natural, I'm not a digital native. I'm, I'm not of that generation. But, and neither is Pastor Louise, but we're, <laughs> we're going to learn how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was just thinking though that if this had happened, say, 20, 25 years ago or so, we wouldn't have had all of this technology that can help us through it so that we can stay more connected. Like, we wouldn't have had the possibility of internet and Zoom calls and email, maybe. I guess there was email just. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, we wouldn't have had all these vehicles that make it, make it possible. Like, it's the timing is... It's never a good time for a disaster, right, or an epidemic or anything like that. But in a way, it's perfect timing because now we have at least a way to, we can talk to you. We can get in touch with each other. We can stay connected, yeah. Absolutely. It's got to be tons of ways, right? Like, what are some of the ways people can use Well, we all have that? phones. Um, and I think you told me, you heard this on CBC Radio, that, you know, even something simple like, committing to connect with five people on your, that's on your uh, uh, directory on your cell phone and just check up on them regularly to make sure they're doing okay. Connecting with people within our church. Um, that's where we, the church, can be the church. Um, we can drop notes to each other through email and, and some of us 
can even go back to that very old-fashioned method of writing a card and slipping it in the mail. The post office is still running to this point. Um, there are any number of ways that we can connect and build community. We are forced to be geographically distanced, but that doesn't mean that we need to be become socially separated from each other in a community. We can build community through this. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's not original with me. I've been seeing this but numerous times on Facebook. The, ch the church has never been about the building. That's right. It's about the people. It's from day one of the early church, it was never a building. It was, it was the people, right? So if we, the, the church, if we are, if we understand how important it is to have that that connection continue, like so, I've always sort of pictured it like the church is sort of like a a net, you know, like a fisherman's net, and and which kind of fits because we're told to be fishers of men, but but every of each one of the knots that holds all those strings together is one of us, and each one of those knots is connected by at least three or four strings to. A number of knots around it, right? Mm -hmm. And and they are all connected until it makes this whole, complete, strong, united whole that is the net or the church. But you cut one or two or a few of those strings, and suddenly there's a hole, and it's weakened, and it's not effective. It can't do its job. So, like, it's really important that we don't let social distancing or the necessity to be, be being careful like this cut us off from each other and, and lose touch because that's our strength is in each other and and being like showing the love of Jesus in all kinds of ways but being connected is, is just huge for the strength of the church to be able to do what we need to do well. Absolutely. And the building may be closed mm -hmm. but the church is and we're the church, and we have the opportunity to be the church. Not only just to each other, but to the people around us. And we have the opportunity to be that voice of hope, that voice of encouragement, the voice of, um, it's going to be okay. And, you know, historically, just thinking of what you were saying about, you know, times of war and times of stress and discouragement, Historically, the church has been the people that ran towards the fire, not mm -hmm. away from it. And that's what we need to be doing today. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. This may be the greatest opportunity of our lifetimes as the church followers of Jesus. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, we have to rest in the understanding that, as I said earlier this week, God's not up in heaven wringing his hands going, oh no, now what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. He is still in control and we can trust in him. And the verse that, that I am going to be totally and completely standing upon over the next little while is from Proverbs, where we are told to lean not on our own understanding. And that's going to be really easy because we're in an area where I don't have any expertise. And trust in the Lord in all our ways acknowledge Him. And He will make our path straight. And He can and will make our path through this, through this uh, time of lockdown and COVID-19 and, and, and fear and uncertainty. He will make our path straight through that. Do you want to close in prayer? Sure. So, Heavenly Father, we just, um, amid all the turmoil and the uncertainty, we thank you because we have a firm foundation underneath our feet that still has not shaken or shifted, and that's you. You are our rock. You are our safe place and our the thing that we can attach our anchor to and ride out the storm. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we just pray for each of the people who are just sitting with us this morning and and listening and sharing and whatever they may be feeling. And we pray, Lord, that they would sense the presence of God, this God who knows them, sees them, who is aware of exactly what's going on in their lives, who cares, who wants to be involved, part of what they're going through. 
And Lord, I just pray that each one of us would just um, learn more than we ever have before to put our eyes on you, to hang on tight to you and your word, the Bible, the promises you've made in it, and help us to walk this out well, Lord, with you as our strength, carrying you, your hope, your love, out into our world where the needs are very great these days. We ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for inviting us into your uh, living room, your desktop, your computer screen, however it is that we're connecting with you this morning. And we look forward. We're going to be releasing more of these. Keep keep your uh, feed open to find out when we're coming up next. Yeah, and if uh, this has been an encouragement or a blessing or a help to you, hit share, right? Yep. Because maybe there's someone else that could be helped or encouraged by seeing it too. Thanks.